Hello and good evening. This is Jay Steinmetz and this is another episode of the Kansas Legislature, your TV show during the session about politics and policy coming out of Topeka, coming out of the Kansas Legislature. I'm Jay Steinmetz, Assistant Professor of Political Science at Fort Hayes State University in Hayes, Kansas. And with me we have uh, two uh, legislators from Topeka. We have Representative Ken Rogers of the Kansas House of Representatives. Uh, Representative Rogers uh, serves uh, District 110, which includes uh, uh, much of Ellis County, all of Rooks County, Phillips County, all of Norton County, and parts of Graham County. Um, Representative Rogers is also chair of the Higher Education Budget in the House. We have also with us tonight Senator Elaine Bowers, uh, who represents North Central Kansas and lots of counties there in North Central Kansas. Um, uh, Senator Bowers is the majority whip of the, of the Kansas Senate, and she's also the chair of the Ethics, Elections, and Local Government Committee. Uh, thank you for joining us, uh, us here on the show uh, this week, Representative Rogers, Representative Bowers. Um, let's get right into it. Uh, we are dealing with an unprecedented uh, uh, viral pandemic. Um, the response uh, uh, globally, the response nationally, and the response at state and local governments um, ha has varied considerably. And the last couple of weeks, we had a show where we talked in depth about the response from Kansas, um, which uh, compared to a lot of other states, mm -hmm. there, there are some um, ele elements of success, uh, positive news coming out of Kansas, um, uh, that, that Kansans are taking it seriously, that the pandemic appears to be slowing in the state. Um, and a lot going on here with regards to that in Topeka, obviously. Um, you folks just came from a marathon session at the legislature, um, almost 24 hours of debating in the House and the Senate. Uh, a sweeping bill was approved on a 27 to 11 vote in the Senate, I believe, a 76 to 34 vote in the House. Among other things, this bill sh uh, shields businesses and hospitals from COVID-19 related lawsuits. Um, it also shifts control significantly um, from the state's pandemic response from Governor Kelly's office and the governor's office to the legislature. Um, basic question here about the bill, thoughts, um, you supported it both. Um, how are Kansans directly gonna benefit from this bill and where do you see this going from here? You wanna go first, Senator? Senator Bowers? Well, well, thank you, Jane. It's nice to see you, and we're the season finale. So, uh, and actually, I was going to be a panelist when we were sent home from Topeka, where we self quarantined and we didn't get to come. So we're happy to be here. Um, so this is a, a topic that I've heard in emails and phone calls at home, and basically local control. One size doesn't fit all is the the main theme that I've heard across the district. And so I went with that in mind, looking to see how our counties could be a bigger player in this. Mm -hmm. And then I don't look at it as a, a shift from to legislative control, more as a collaboration with the governor. Because in the CARES, the funds that are coming in, it is, it, it's her state budget director, mm -hmm. and then down to a committee mm -hmm. of legislators. Mm -hmm. And that's important that we have legislators involved with expensing the money because we do come from all four corners of the state. And it's important that we have a mixture of legislators along with the executive branch and working as a team. Mm -hmm. That's the way I see that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Representative Rogers, uh, thoughts on the bill? Well, I mean, you know, we, we started working on it, I believe, at 4.30, 5 o'clock this morning. <laughs> so, so I'm running on about 36 hours of no sleep mm -hmm. and driving from Topeka here. So, um, you know, I, I, think it's, I think it's mischaracterized. I don't think there's a shift to more, legisl I think, uh, to more legislative control. I think what it is is we're bringing back checks and balances. When we left in March, we were in a hurry to, to get out. We thought we knew the right procedures to use. Um, there was a little glitch in, in, in the wording. And after the majority of legislators were gone, they realized, hey, there's, we all have the same, we have the right intent but the language isn't there. And we all got along, led, mm -hmm. all the branches got along mm -hmm. till one branch didn't get their way and then they sued. And so what this is, this is simply a matter, how does it affect the Kansas people? It gives, it gives them checks and balances. It doesn't mm -hmm. say one branch can run everything. I think one of the things, Jay, that gets confused is that, 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 that somehow there's a power grab by the legislative branch. Any federal money that comes down it doesn't matter whether it's the CARES Act or stuff that comes every year, goes to the governor's office. Some of the, the governor doesn't, I mean, the, she doesn't dictate, or whoever the governor is, doesn't dictate where that money goes. It goes because every state has a governor. Mm -hmm. And so what we're wanting is just to make sure, as we do anything else that comes into the, 
any other federal money that comes in. We have a general government budget committee mm -hmm. that reviews all that. And so what this is, we're just saying the legislature should, you know, have a look as well on this money that's coming in. Mm -hmm. and, it, it, and it's not that we don't trust the governor, you know, because there's only so, certain things you could use. And if you don't use that money, it goes back. But that's, it, it's simply a matter of checks and balances. And I think the folks would expect the exact same thing if, if, if the president or uh, the, Washington decided that all state legislators should get it. Governors would say, well, we want to say as well. So I, I think as far as, I, I don't believe there was a shift. I believe, as Senator Bauer said, hopefully this brings a more of a collaboration. Mm -hmm. Uh, just to remind the viewers, this is a call-in show. We uh, uh, take your calls anywhere in the state uh, concerning this issue. We'd love to hear uh, from you about the legislature's decision to pass this bill. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, or the phone number for the call-in show is 1-800-337-4788. Uh, let me go a little deeper into that, Representative Rogers, a little bit. You know, executive branch of government typically handles direct public safety measures, law enforcement, disaster response that kind of thing. Can you give us a little bit more in depth about the rationale for um, uh, balancing out, as, if, as you will, no, I, uh, I, what disaster response, which traditionally is part of an executive branch of power, uh, you know, moving this into a more of a collaborative or balanced approach, well, what's the rationale there from government? This is not a tornado. This is not a grass fire in south central Kansas. Mm -hmm. This is something we're all dealing with. Mm -hmm. I think when you look at it, 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 you know, everybody loves to play Monday morning quarterback, so let's, let's go there. Mm -hmm. We shut everything down. We shut schools down. We shut things down before New York, who had many more cases before we did. Mm -hmm. And so I think what it is is let's make sure we're not playing politics with this. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure that if it's needed, we, we all believe in science. I, I think sometimes that gets lost that, that you know, we kind of jump off the end. We, maybe as Republicans or, or people that aren't in the governor's party that, that want to do that, that's not what it, that's not what it is at all. Do you, do you think overall the state's response has been an effective one, a smart one? Do you see this as a success story, what Kansas has been doing? I think Kansans mm -hmm. have done well. Mm -hmm. Kansans want to be safe. Kansans want to not be sick. Mm -hmm. And so what they've done, at least in my district, here in, in West Central Kansas, is they don't feel well, they stay home. They mask up, they wash their hands, they try to support their local businesses. Mm -hmm. From a state's perspective, I think we, we could be a little more communicating as far as, as, as far as what some of those measures are to, to keep our economy going. Mm -hmm. So that, that's kind of, that's, that's where I am with it. I say A plus for the citizens of the state of Kansas, because when you look at a lot of counties didn't have any cases, and that's not necessarily, you know, that could be just somebody driving through town that, 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 may, that may have it. But the, the state, like every other state, is learning. I think we all probably get a B plus or a B minus, <laughs> because there's things we, you know, you know, people say, well, how come you didn't act this way and this way as a legislature? Well, how many of us were around the last time this happened in 1923? Mm -hmm. And so, so we, you know, we have learned some lessons. In January, we'll go back and do more statute and prove it just to make sure, not to pick sides, but just so there is that equal, you know, equal representation of all branches mm -hmm. of government. And, and we might Senator mention this is temporary. Mm -hmm. It expires mm -hmm. January 26, mm -hmm. 2021, so we'll be able to come back as a legislature and, and deal with it too. Mm -hmm. But the bill also has a, a lot of other parts in it. It's unemployment insurance, like waiving the first week you could get your check immediately mm -hmm. when they're getting processed through. It eliminates the job search also, which seems to be a problem with people going into businesses that uh, aren't, aren't open or available to the public. So there are some good things with that too. Expanded nursing home inspections mm -hmm. that we know that is a hot spot with some of the cases mm -hmm. in Kansas. So there, there are other items in there. First responders also. First responders being notified mm -hmm. that this could be a COVID case. And those are all good public safety issues too that our people back here care about. And I think, and I th I think they'll play out as, as again mm -hmm. as we know more and as things open up it's a, it's a huge, it's a huge bill that was kind of all pieced mm -hmm. together. And sure, you know, people say, well, you did it in the darkness of night and all this. Well, that's, that's, that's the process. It's, mm -hmm. it's the way it, you know, again, dealing with unprecedented times, 
uh, in, in a perfect world, sure, we'd, we would love to have two weeks. Uh, to, and we'd have all the time in the world to debate, but, but every year we, we, we start out, we always bottleneck things. At the and, end. and actually, it wasn't put together on the floor. There were committee positions. The House and the Senate Judiciary Committee had hearings on these, mm -hmm. and there's several bills combined. But it was Kansans coming in to testify even on how this has affected their lives. Mm -hmm. and so it, there was a process, and it was well thought out. And then the Conference Committee report, which is the give and take between the House and the Senate to get that balance that the legislators are looking for. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it was well thought out. There are a lot of pieces in there that are important to um, health care. Telemedicine is in there, too, and expanding hospital beds. Yeah, and, so, and, it, and it wasn't one-sided. I mm -hmm. mean, both, both parties had folks come in to testify. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and so it, 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 was, it was crafted mm -hmm. as, as bipartisan as you can in a situation like this. Mm -hmm. You know, some pushback about late into the night, you know, throwing it together. But there's also a significant concern about the fact that the governor has signaled that, that she's going to veto this anyway, and that a veto is probably likely. So how much of this is a waste of time and effort mm -hmm. on the legislature's part in terms mm -hmm. of passing a bill that likely is not going to get, get uh, uh, passed into law? Representative Well, Rogers? my phone over the last five, six weeks has got a lot of phone calls, a lot of texts, a lot of messages that says we need something needs to be done. And so that's what we started with conversations and with meetings over Zoom and other places to craft something so that we did have that, that, that checks and balances. I'm going to say that a lot, but that's, but that's the case. And if she, if she vetoes it, that's her prerogative. That's why this, you know, somebody on the Internet said, well, the legislature is going to stop it right now. Well, it, it stops in 10 days. Why is it 10 days? Because she has 10 days to hold the bill and then whether sign it or let it become law. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so if she vetoes it, well, then the next steps, do we come back as a special session? What do we do? Because What's the, the likelihood of that coming back for uh, a special session? It, if it is, it probably will be right away. I, I don't know. I mean, you know, we continue to get data every day on how things are. The cases are up. Yes, you want to know why? We're doing more testing. Mm -hmm. And so I think sometimes, you know, I, I'm in this business, and so if you don't have context with numbers, you can create whatever you want to. If you want to create a story to scare everybody and not go out and enjoy a beautiful day, that can happen. But if you take a cautioned, measured approach, it's like anything else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and, and Jay, we might also mention the Attorney General has an opinion now. Yeah. And he is saying this is constitutional. Mm -hmm. So those 30 plus pages are being reviewed while we're gone too. So that might bring us back as well if it's vetoed. So, or a, a, have a, a new EO that adjusts course that the governor listens to the attorney general's thoughts on can, it too. Can you say more about uh, what, what the attorney general said with regards to the bill that was just passed this morning? Right. Well, we, it was out Wednesday night at midnight, mm -hmm. and I can say I can speak generally. Uh, other than that, there are problems that needs to be looked at, and I'm sure the governor's staff is reviewing it now, as are the legislative lawyers, too. So I, specifically, I don't know. I just know there's going to be some things brought out in there that mm -hmm. she'll need to look at. Yeah, yeah. Um, on Wednesday, you mentioned Attorney General uh, Derek Schmidt described the legality of uh, the governor's emergency powers in a disaster declaration, called it doubtful, mm -hmm. um, that, that there is a legality there. Mm -hmm. uh, from my understanding, he insinuated that, uh, that, that there can't be rolling proclamations for mm -hmm. a single emergency event. Um, do you agree with his assessment on that? Um, are you concerned at all that this creates confusion for the public or that there, th this lack of coordination uh, represents politicking at the expense of public safety? <laughs> um, Senator Bowers? Well. When the Attorney General speaks, I think we need to listen to what he's saying. He's our top lawyer. It's his advice. In fact, he testified in front of judiciary and cautioned us not to take too big of a bite mm -hmm. or nothing would happen. Mm -hmm. And that was one of his warnings to us. But he did want all the EOs ex acknowledged and accepted, and it had to be in statute. It couldn't be a resolution like we did before. Mm -hmm. So he did have some requests for us to look at that, and we did honor those too. But when he testified in committee, he didn't have this opinion written. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't surprise me that he's come out with these points. 
because it is a big topic and we haven't been here before. Mm -hmm. So we need to see how we adjust these statutes. And we can go back and make more new statutes to deal with this in the future too. Mm -hmm. But just mm -hmm. generally right now to try to fix this temporarily mm -hmm. and then move on. And just to clarify, mm -hmm. what you mean EO, you mean executive, executive order. order. Yeah. And executive mm -hmm. order is very different from a legislature mm -hmm. passing law. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Again, you know, the, the, and, and there's some controversy about executive orders, legality, constitutionality, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Um, but executive orders are traditionally the, the place where disaster response, mm -hmm. emergency right. management, mm -hmm. those types of things, you know, take place. Through I, again, this, since this is unique, it's different than the other emergencies tornadoes, that we've had, floods, the tornadoes, fires. severe weather, mm -hmm. those type of things. Mm -hmm. And so I think it has created a lot of confusion, mm -hmm. primarily because we haven't dealt with this in, in over, mm -hmm. a, you know, a century. So, uh, but, but we come out with a phased reopen and we go 1.0, 1.5, 1.7. You know, people, mm -hmm. you know, they, especially here, out here, and, and counties that haven't been affected, they, they think they should be, and I believe they should be treated differently. And so, uh, you, know, I, you know, I think, you know, Attorney General Schmidt waited till a late hour to give his opinion as not to, he didn't want to look, make it look political. He, he didn't want to get political about it at all because mm -hmm. he's simply doing his job as mm -hmm. you know as our as our top law guy, mm -hmm. and and we'll see now. Now we'll finally get a chance to uh, review a lot of things. There was a lot of things that that I have stacks and stacks of mm -hmm. papers that we can kind of go through or go on you know online mm -hmm. and 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 now get a better idea because a lot of folks want to know what does this mean, what does that mm -hmm. mean, mm -hmm. and I to me one of the good things that happened is, uh, and, and who, I mean, if it gets vetoed, it gets vetoed, but to give more power back to the counties yeah. mm -hmm. and the county commissioners and their health officer mm -hmm. work together. And if they feel that it, the county can be opened up more, it is. That doesn't mean that if people don't feel safe, they, can't, they can stay in their homes, they can mask mm -hmm. up, they can do whatever, that's, that's fine. I know Secretary Norman said he wants us to mask up when we're outside, not demanding it, but asking, and then that, and that's fine. And I, but I think, mm -hmm. I think it's the situation in Johnson, Sedgwick, Shawnee, Douglas, Finney, Ford counties, are different than that tier up in the northwest corner mm -hmm. that have had no cases. So I, I think that's the thing where, because again, our folks out here, when they were told to shelter close to home, they did. Mm -hmm. When, they, when they, you know, they're 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 very conscientious, and they're not running around and doing things. They, 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 they do the right thing as they do any time. Mm -hmm. And they bided their time. They waited for phase two mm -hmm. and then counted on that date and then it was backpedaled. Mm -hmm. So that was a frustration that mm -hmm. we were hearing from mm -hmm. is they counted on this date and mm -hmm. even though it probably was said, now this is flexible, it depends on the cases, they didn't hear that as strongly right. as they right. wanted mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. make mm -hmm. their graduation dates yeah. of the real life functions that they were counting on. So the disappointment there was yeah. very strong and it was a, it's a topic that we've heard many, many days in a row that a uh, phone calls, personal phone calls and emails to mm -hmm. us. Well, it's very a time personal. factor, right? I mean, I think this mm -hmm. is one of the things you're mentioning about the difference between a tornado event, a natural disaster mm -hmm. event and this. This requires a longer term response and a great deal of patience for the public. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so there may have been some frustration with that. Mm -hmm. it, phase two is now come out. As today. today is the first yeah. day of phase two. Let's mm -hmm. talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, we've got uh, over 8,500 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Kansas, uh, 178 deaths um, from my understanding is today's new number. Um, new confirmed cases, hard to, hard to gauge. It seems as though there's a plateau and from mm -hmm. some health experts, but it's hard to gauge with regards to new cases mm -hmm. because testing increases, you're going to get more positive results, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. But starting today, we're in phase two of a plan to reopen Kansas. Um, this allows for gatherings of no more than 15, 15. people. Mm -hmm. um, most businesses can reopen now. There are some exceptions to that and limitations to that. Large entertainment venues, uh, fairs, festivals, mm -hmm. summer camps, bars and nightclubs where they don't have um, food option and curbside mm -hmm. delivery, uh, most swimming pools. Uh, but for mm -hmm. the most part, all other businesses are open. Are you supportive of phase two uh, restrictions and where we are right now? Are we moving too slowly? Are we moving too quickly? What are your thoughts about, about what's happening right now? 
representative. I, I still think it should be mm -hmm. a, a, up to the counties. Okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I think mm -hmm. it should be local control. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows it better. Somebody that mm -hmm. sits in Topeka in a in a cinder block uh, room that doesn't see the sun shine should not be making decisions for for the folks that 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 are are in contact with this with the, with their areas every day. So that that that's the thing. Um, sure. I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, we do want a measured approach to open back up to simply throw the doors open and say good luck well i don't know if i don't know if we're there yet especially in some areas but but we look at here folks here that have done a good job is concerned right now if you go say to the kansas city metro area or those hot areas in nebraska you know we want to make sure we don't bring you know, it back, you know, even accidentally didn't have, have outbreaks. And so mm -hmm. that's where, you know, we've worked, a lot of folks have worked with local businesses that, mm -hmm. that, that can be open and, uh, and, and keep folks home to get, again, the, the basic needs. Let's and this bring in a phase, caller here. Oh, I, I would like to say this phase yeah. helps because mm -hmm. little peewee baseball game practices can start. You know, mm -hmm. So more of the local activities that the mm -hmm. families have counted on and look forward to. Mm -hmm. So some of those activities are available now mm -hmm. and that makes is getting people back to normal mm -hmm. and to what they were hoping for and the kids have been home from school since yeah. March so yeah. uh, they want them out in the fresh air yeah. and so that's important is the family traditions and mm -hmm. and but believe it or not baseball is a big deal mm -hmm. with these families mm -hmm. and yeah. that's one of the biggest ones I hear about mm -hmm. Uh, we've got a caller on the line. Uh, this is Rick from Concordia, Kansas. Rick, good evening. What is your question? Uh, with regard to the uh, state budget, how much trouble is the state of Kansas in with the impact that COVID has had on our economy? And are you encouraging our national representatives to provide assistance or funding uh, to the state budget? Thank you. Great question. Two parts to that question. Let's talk about the economic issues going on here right now. We've got a two-year budget projection, which is looking like $1.4 billion deficit. Um, the state, uh, state governments across the nation, um, there are economic fallouts here. Mm -hmm. In Kansas, we also have a constitutional amendment uh, that the, the government must balance the budget. So th things have to happen with regards to that. That's the first question. And then the second mm -hmm. question there from Rick, a crucial one, f with our national representation in Washington, do you support uh, uh, the U.S. Congress passing a bill, uh, and a bill that could be signed by uh, President Trump, uh, that would, would give additional money to state governments? Um, let's begin mm -hmm. with Senator Bowers. Yeah, and, and the last question first. I, mm -hmm. I truly believe that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know best how we want to spend the money in Kansas. And if that money comes back to us in a block grant, then that's the way it should be, and then let, let the budget committees send it out how it needs to be in. Now, the federal money coming in can't be backfilled for our losses, mm -hmm. so that's an important part. So we have to be careful how we spend the money that's coming to us already, but additional money to our state and our congressional folks fighting for us is very important to us. So you support a, a, a bill from Washington that would increase the, the money from the states. I, there, there, mm -hmm. there have been some politicking mm -hmm. about that issue yeah. on Washington, mm -hmm. But it seems like most state governments are supportive, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, they're getting hit hard economically. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts about, about the other piece there uh, that, that uh, Rick brought up? We've got now a, a pretty big budget okay. hole. Mm -hmm. um, we, finances, economically, the state mm -hmm. was looking pretty good before it this was, hit. It, mm -hmm. and, but now we've mm -hmm. got um, some rough waters ahead. How do you was, see the legislature getting out of this? And when I was in the House in 2007, 2008, that's when the recession hit. Mm -hmm. So I. Remember the, the cuts, the allotments that each agency took, and they, most of them were across the board, and even education. So that would be something we'll have to look at. And I am glad we have a balanced budget in Kansas. It, it forces us to live within our means. I'm sure the economy is going to come back strong, but it will take just a little while, I believe, to do that. But I, I really think that that's probably what could happen is the allotments, and then we'll when we go back in January, we'll know what our consensus revenue numbers are that we'll need to work within the parameters that are set there. Do you have any idea of some targets, some things that, 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 that you should look at and scrutinize in terms mm -hmm. of spending um, particular areas? Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned allotments. Can mm -hmm. you say a little bit more about that and then maybe identify mm -hmm. some other target areas that Well, you we would hate to, to 
to go to education, but it is 51% of our budget, the public, public schools. So that, I do know the governor said that would be part of the mix as she had to look at all of it. Uh, you know, we, out here in the ag world, the Department of Ag is a very small sliver of the budget. So we, social services have been increasing, so we need, we sure don't want to adjust, you know, like our nursing home inspections and going in deep into their budget. So um, I imagine there'll be hiring freezes, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, that uh, could be layoffs. Mm -hmm. Department of Transportation is a big piece. And, you know, we just passed a big transportation budget. Sadly to say, maybe some of those projects don't get done as fast as we had thought they would. And so those are the big buckets of money that we'd have to look at, transportation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and education. Representative Rogers, that second question first. Do you support uh, a bill from the U.S. Congress that's going to give money to the states? Well, I'm glad Rick, Rick called. Um, just to make a blanket statement, I, I, I can't give you an answer. Um, to say somebody come, you know, bail us out, I, I, I don't know. We've got trillions of dollars now in federal money that has gone to a lot of different places. Uh, I, I think, you know, I was not a big fan of some of that first federal stimulus money that came out before we really kind of knew what we were dealing with. So I think what we, again, measured approach. Let's get a good handle of where we are. You know, we had a consensus revenue number come in when we were, when we were off. Obviously, that was a very speculative number. We know there's a huge hole in the budget now. There's things that have to be funded. One thing that didn't happen was uh, the mega omnibus bill that if there was money left to go to do some programs, of course, that's down the wayside. Senator Bauer said, you know, there's money coming now through the CARES Act that will be used for COVID-related situations. I, I don't know if this administration and this Congress, in, in listening to our congressional delegation, that there's not much support for, and I don't want to use, I don't want to use that bailout word, but even assistance. I think as, as you see what goes on, th th there may be something, but like Senator Bauer said, probably should go through our budget committees or ways and, appropriation ways and means to see where the best ways to do that, if there are ways to, to fill in some of the holes. Uh, so uh, again, without knowing what the bill is, it's hard to say whether to support it. That You can get into a, as we find at the end of the legislative mm -hmm. session, we do what we call gut and goes, you could support the best bill in the world and all of a sudden it becomes a completely other bill. So mm -hmm. until you really know the details, it's, it's hard to say mm -hmm. you know, unilaterally that you support something because you don't know what kind of strings would be attached to it as well. Um, but overall, just in general, like in theory, do you support the idea that Washington should be providing federal assistance to state governments for the economic uh, Well, the federal government right now is, it has sent uh, two... Uh, if not, well, two payments of, of forms, almost three now, to agriculture, mm -hmm. to, directly to producers, mm -hmm. which will help stimulate the economy. That's the goal. And, and so I think those, it, it get assistance directly to folks. That's the best way to do it. I'm concerned if it would go to, quote, state governments, then where would that go? So I think if we're going to do assistance, it would go directly either to those in need or to directly to the American people. So that's where, as we look at moving forward, I think, you know, find those opportunities to encourage citizens to help fire this economy back up. So stimulus, mm -hmm. stimulus checks to citizens over I didn't money that. to state governments? I, I didn't say <laughs> stimulus checks. I said if we're going to do things, I think it should go directly to either uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, families, so on. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that might be the best way. Now, I think we're looking at cuts, we're looking at allotments. Um, you know, that, 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 that's a reality. We worked hard to get K-12 back in line, but we've all got to be a player in this. And to think that, that something's not, is going to go untouched, then something will go by the wayside. We still have huge needs in social services. We have mm -hmm. huge, huge needs to try to get our foster care system taken care of. Yeah. And, and, and how we're going to do that. I mean, yeah. those are the things you lose sleep over. Yeah. And, 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 and try to meet just the basic 
needs of helping people, yeah. let alone the other things. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's mm -hmm. going to be it. You know, those who want to run for the legislature, that's great, but it's not. It's not going to be fun times at all. Mm -hmm. It's it, this is going to be a heavy lift. We've got another caller here. Uh, we've got Carol from El Dorado, Kansas. Good evening, Carol. What is your question? Well, um, property tax is due on December the 20th, and then you can pay the second half June the 20th. But for your convenience in Topeka, you changed it to May the 10th, which is several years ago. Why can't you, on the first half, the December the 20th, change that to the 27th? Because those of us that get our Social Security checks on the fourth Wednesday of the month, like last year, the fourth Wednesday of the month was Christmas Day. Have you ever tried to go shopping on Christmas Day because you just not got your Social Security check? I mean, if you can change it from June the 20th to May the 10th, why can't you change instead of December the 20th to December the 27th? That's only seven days. But people like me that's on Social Security, I would be able to have some money to buy my grandchildren Christmas. But I can't do that because I've got to pay my taxes on the 20th. Mm -hmm. I don't have enough money to pay for both. So a pointed mm -hmm. question there from Carol. So, well, I, I've noticed how the 20th is close to Christmas too, Carol. I've often thought that with kids and grandkids too. Uh, that hasn't been an idea that's been proposed since mm -hmm. I've been in Topeka, although it's always something that we can talk about too. Uh, and then it predates both Ken and I when it was moved to May, and I do remember, and as a business owner, paying taxes in June. So it was, it was a balanced uh, in half the year and half the year. So it, going to Christmas is really close. But you know what? That's something we could bring back to the tax committee, what you mm -hmm. said on, too. I, 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 I think mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely worth a conversation. I, you mm -hmm. know, again, don't think about things like that. Mm -hmm. One thing that we did do in, in th yesterday through everything mm -hmm. is we did pass a kind of a package of, of tax bills looking at reducing some property taxes, mm -hmm. uh, looking at possibly setting up to where you can maybe make payments or do some other things. And, and right now, because of the situation, uh, maybe have some relief on, on penalties just to kind of get everybody caught up. And so, mm -hmm. so some things are happening. So, um, uh, but, but, but good, you know, mm -hmm. again, something you don't think about, uh, but uh, and again. It, and what we see in Topeka, a bill is just someone's idea. Mm -hmm. And that's, we, that's how it we starts. put the idea into a, a bill, then we have testimony. We mm -hmm. have pros and cons, and people come up and testify. So that would be an excellent idea. We, we could help you do that too, Carol. Mm -hmm. And one bill that didn't move, it was in the House and didn't come over to the Senate, was a lot of businesses have to prepay the first half of the month's taxes. Mm -hmm. And that was looked at in a House bill, if we do away with that system. But I believe it stalled, too, with um, holding off to see what happens during this crisis. But there, mm -hmm. there are other tax ideas that are and out the there. Transparency, well. the, the, mm -hmm. the, the tax transparency bill mm -hmm. for counties, you know, you, you have that level. And if, then if you raise it, you have to send out a notice. Yes. And, 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 and the most important part county commissioners have talked about is removing the tax list. Right. And, and so that is the biggest piece of that tax bill that we just, just So hopefully out. that will maybe bring some mm -hmm. more stabilization to county budgets. Mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, mm -hmm. again, that, and, and again, mm -hmm. like Senator Bauer and, I, Bauer and I agree, local control. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we're, we're in other counties rather than our home counties a few times a year, but, you know, those county commissioners, those city council folks are there every day in those counties. And so uh, that's where, you know, they know exactly what, what works for them. We've got another caller here on the line. It's Dave from Dodge City. Good evening, Dave. What is your question? Good evening, and thank you. This is directed towards both of our legislators. What does Kansas have to do to get the Medicaid expansion bill passed uh, in Kansas? How long are we going to allow Senator White to hold that program hostage? There's 130,000 people, low-income individuals, that could use this program right now, yet it continues to be stalemated and doesn't go anywhere. So can you please tell me what has to be done? And thank you. Thank you, Dave. Let me add on to that a little bit. Dave read my mind. That was my next question. <laughs> Kansas Medicaid expansion failed in this session, despite polls that show expansion's popular amongst Kansas. Um, you know, and another piece of this that I wanted to ask and maybe add on to Dave's question here, which is a general 
why can't we get this done if it's popular? Mm -hmm. um, does the COVID-19 outbreak shed new understanding mm -hmm. at all on the question of Medicaid expansion? We've got now about 160,000 Kansans who have lost their jobs because of this viral pandemic. Some of those losing their jobs have employee-based health care. Um, has the economic fallout from the pandemic shown the importance of taking those federal dollars for Medicaid expansion and expanding health care coverage? Let's start with Senator Bowers mm -hmm. first. Well, that is a topic that's just come up the last couple of weeks as we're going through this crisis. Uh, and w there was, um, yesterday there was an attempt in the Senate, and, and I have supported Medicaid expansion. And there was 27 votes last year, or 23, but not to 27 to debate it last year. But our majority leader at the time worked with our governor and came up with a modified plan. And that was a bill that never got any traction in the Senate this year. But I had thought it would because it was a compromise plan. And the House already, already per, passed a version that they could go to conference and, and settle the differences. But it didn't get that far. Now, yesterday, we did have an attempt to put it on as an amendment, but it went on to a utility bill. And in, in our process, it wasn't germane. So that was the only opportunity yesterday for it to come up during the session. So it, for this year, it is gone. And we'll have to come back next year and see if we write in a new bill, this modified bill, to build consensus. But perhaps this pandemic we're having now will change people's minds too. Does it, does it at all, you said you, you supported Medicaid mm -hmm. expansion in the past, mm -hmm. does it at all change your understanding, Senator Bowers, mm -hmm. that, that, that we now have a viral pandemic, there's maybe more mm -hmm. urgency now with something like this in terms of your well, support? It's, or? Y yes, I do believe so. It's brought more attention to it again, mm -hmm. and where it kind of stalled out early on. And it was, it's been a, an issue that has stopped a lot of health bills from coming across either floor. So uh, we thought maybe we had a plan working in, with the executive branch and the Senate to get one done, but it, it just didn't happen through the process this year. So yes, I think it does bring more attention mm -hmm. and, and we'll continue to work on it too. Representative Rogers, uh, you've indicated in past shows that you do not support Medicaid expansion. Um, continue to not support? Does the COVID-19 outbreak shed new understanding and new light on the issue for you? We'll have an election in November. Mm -hmm. You know, Senator Wagle is not running for re-election. In December, we'll gather after the election and, and do an internal for leadership. And we'll see what their priorities are. The House mm -hmm. passed a version of Medicaid expansion. Mm -hmm. We can't tell the Senate what to do. The Senate can't tell us what to do. Um, I understand. Um, you know, when we have a drought, do we tell people, well, we have a drought, so you can only drink half a glass of water. I mean, let's... And I don't want to be flippant about it. I, I, underst I understand the situation. And I think every time it keeps getting brought up, we do learn more of true costs uh, of where we are. Um, there's discussion of, is this, and there's discussion in my district a lot of, of people that want it and people that don't. And so um, it'll, be, it'll be an issue. Um, We'll see, continue to where, um, from a national level, uh, where it is. Uh, well, and there, there, may be, there may be changes. So mm -hmm. uh, if it becomes more appealing or becomes, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it, may, it may not happen. I mean, I, How I, about for you, in your opinion? Is it more appealing to you? You, you did not vote for it, correct, in the, in the House this session? Right. Um, do you continue to be against Medicaid expansion? Care to share the rationale? Have you softened a little bit on the I issue? I am looking at, at what for sure our costs are mm -hmm. and said, oh, it's, it's only $300 million or whatever there, whatever it is. Do we, is that really going to be the case? Mm -hmm. Are we really dealing with, with true numbers? And, and right now with the way the budget situation is, uh, again, pick our priorities. Mm -hmm. But we gave an extra billion dollars to, to K-12, and I voted for that. I support it. K-12 and then the small rural schools I represent. So we, we have to, you know, there, there's, there's, there's not, uh, we don't get a card and there's a magic money bank that, that the, this federal money is going to come down. Uh, as this whole conversation started, we didn't have the one and the two and now the three trillion dollar COVID aid packages being distributed around the, around the country. Mm -hmm. That's almost six trillion, mm -hmm. six trillion dollars. 
and there's, you know, yes, the federal government can print money, but at some time, you have to pay that back. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's, that's a, cont I mean, I, I have conversations. I know people get upset because I don't, uh, you know, have not said, oh, well, I mean, I, I understand those for it. I understand those opposed to it. I, I'm, it's simply a matter of economics, and I, and I understand the, 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 uh, the, the medical situation, and, and I've worked, I've supported what Senator Roberts has done on a federal level to fix the glitch in the ACA that, that hurt the uh, rural hospitals, the rural hospitals mm -hmm. and, their, and their repayments. Mm -hmm. So let's get that fixed. Let's see where that is. Mm -hmm. My concern is with some of those things with the, with the ACA, Medicaid expansion, whatever you call it, is, is, that truly help, is that truly helpful to the rural hospitals? Are we simply looking at it as dollars, you know, and, and, and for a short-term fix, mm -hmm. is that really giving us our long-term effect? Yeah, I mean, there's been a number of studies that have come out, and, you know, what are your thoughts on that one, Senator Bowers? I mean, it, it, from a lot of the studies suggest that it mm -hmm. has helped rural hospitals, and rural yeah. hospitals, that's, mm -hmm. that's the cushion that they need. Um, mm -hmm. And there's also a point that has been made about Medicaid expansion, bringing mm -hmm. dollars circulating into a state economy mm -hmm. has its mm -hmm. own bump effect, if you will, that's not just about health care policy more specifically. Mm -hmm. It's about the increase in a circulation of dollars mm -hmm. in, in an economy. Um, thoughts well, to add to that? Well, with the hospitals losing their dish payment, which was went away with the ACA, so they lost money right away, just mm -hmm. immediately. So backfilling that in, this is how they were looking at that. And my rural hospitals do ask me for this. Their board members do. It's, it's a regular conversation. So it, it is important to the rural communities, I believe. Uh, we look at our counties who have a county-based tax that pays mm -hmm. the hospital. Pays, pays for the hospital too. So if we, if we look at, do we decrease, if we take this money, does it decrease property taxes? So there's ways to analyze that that's at a, a rural local level that we can look at. So I do believe it helps our rural hospitals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's, uh, we've had this conversation on the show many times about Medicaid expansion and there was also a comment uh, made that, you know, there can be benefits to Kansas waiting for Medicaid expansion because we get to see the effect that it has in other states. Um, there have been studies that have suggested positive outcomes and consequences economically in terms of health care policy from other states. Um, there was also, uh, just last week, uh, Associated Press reported on a study that showed cancer deaths uh, dropping in states that had expanded Medicaid compared to those that did not. Um, mm -hmm. There was also, I think, nationally, uh, uh, Senator John Cornyn of Texas, when asked about health care options for unemployed people who have lost their job in the COVID-19 pandemic, suggested that they sign up for Obamacare, and that's what Obamacare is there for, and thankfully we have it. So mm -hmm. is there now a shift? Is this opened up? Has this softened stances in terms of health care policy a little bit? Mm -hmm. I get the sense there's still economic concerns. Mm -hmm. Bills have to be paid, right? Um, uh, but, but has it softened the stance at all? What are your mm -hmm. thoughts on that, Senator Bowers? Mm. Haven't really thought of it from that angle before. It has been economic also. Mm -hmm. and what, are, what does the numbers do to our counties? Mm -hmm. And what is the budget for the state? So I do believe this uh, pandemic has brought out, now we're not sure where our funds are. Mm -hmm. So can we afford Medicaid expansion? I've heard it that way also the last few weeks too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yep, yep. Um, I continue to listen to my hospitals, their mm -hmm. boards, and this is something they ask for. Mm -hmm. Representative Branches, any other thoughts? <laughs> you know, not really. I mean, I, you know, you've, you, we've talked about this. We talk about it, and, and you're, you, you seem only give one side. You, you know, you're not talking about Arkansas and other states that have had some challenges. I, that's when I would challenge you. I mean, I, I understand. What and are I know, the challenges? That well, what I'm saying is, you know, the, the way you're putting it is it's all, you know, gumdrops and, and you know, and, and all, it's, 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 a, it's a safe all. Some states have had... Well, I'm just bringing out the studies. I'm not actually writing <laughs> well, there, the But studies. there are studies, though, that say <laughs> that, that it has broke, it has really hurt states' budgets that have expanded. Mm -hmm. it, there are some that it has helped. I'm not saying it's not. And what I have said, I, I talked to the governor in January after the state of the state, and I said, Governor... I don't support Medicaid expansion, but I will, if it passes, I will not fight it. I will not. Uh, it's, if that's what we want, that's fine. And I've told my constituents and others, 
you know, that are very passionate about it. If I'm wrong, well, the first one, I'll be the first one to admit mm -hmm. if, if we go down the road and it does. But right now, I, I understand it's a very important issue. Mm -hmm. But we're also dealing with an economy mm -hmm. that was almost literally shut down mm -hmm. by this governor. And so what, you know, we talk about, you know, the COVID deaths and, and the COVID sicknesses. What about that, 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 that small business person that, you know, was shut down, uh, nothing of their own? Maybe they didn't qualify or didn't get, you know, that other government funding. They struggled to, to feed their family. The emotional toll that's taken on them, that's not being, dis th th those things aren't being discussed. And that's, when, that's why I fight every day. And most folks have my phone number, and they call me, and I listen to their stories, and if I can help them, you know one thing I don't ask them, if they're Republican or Democrat or what they do or don't support, it's how can I help you? I can make, a, I can make some contact to try to get your needs solved. Mm -hmm. And that's it. I don't go brag, I don't, I just, I'm here to, that's what we do. We're mm -hmm. here to help. Mm -hmm. and, and, and part of that is, is, I have a grave concern for all our communities you know, that, they're, that they are healthy, not only from a physical standpoint, from an emotional standpoint, and a financial standpoint. It is critical out here. We have to have those, and we have to have folks that have confidence and, and that want to engage in the economy. And, and it, it, if, if medical situations is part of it, that's fine. Because I think what we're going to find is come January, when we gather back again as a new legislature, all these things are going to be discussed. And who knows where we are with all this, and there may be, there may be other ways. Uh, obviously, there's, there's engagement in rural health care and, and how to do that and, and trying to find multitudes of answers. Make sure we have plenty of doctors and, yeah. and so on. Just very quickly, you said, you said confidence to get out there and you know, go about normal daily life economic activity. What role does testing play in that in terms of the COVID-19 uh, outbreak? How, how, to what extent do we need a mass testing infrastructure for people to feel safe to go about their normal everyday life? What are your thoughts on well, that? Well, yesterday when we went to the Capitol, to, 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 uh, they, they scanned us for a thermo thermometer, took our temperature, and gave us one of these. A break. In fact, I haven't t had time to take it off yet. <laughs> and what this shows was that I did that basic scan and that my temperature was fine and I was evidently symptom free. I didn't do a test. I think there are some where you have, you know, you, right now anyway, where you have gatherings or, or manufacturing plants to need that, or folks, if mm -hmm. folks mm -hmm. want it, or if they, or if they feel they're having some symptoms. Mm -hmm. Although there's concern about asymptomatic cases, the CDC just today published mm -hmm. it, it, a report that mm -hmm. said uh, estimated 35 percent of Absolutely. positive COVID-19 cases but, are mm -hmm. asymptomatic. And, but, right, mm -hmm. but but then maybe if should we have people if if to get it every day? I, I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, that's the thing we have it's to look at. And, and I'm not an expert, so I, mm -hmm. I, don't, I think everybody handles it differently. Some mm -hmm. people want to wear a mask, you know, even if they're not around people, and that's their prerogative. Others don't, don't want to, and that's a prerogative too. Some churches, like mine, does, they're not going to sing for a while. We're, gonna, we're, 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 spread, we're social distancing, <laughs> but to not to take that chance, and that's mm -hmm. fine. That's, but that was a decision made locally. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, Carol from El Dorado back on the line. Good evening, Carol. Uh, have a follow-up question? Yes. Um, years ago, you used to be able to get the food sales tax uh, refund if you're a senior citizen when you did your Homestead Act. And at the time, the $125 you got refunded. And the bank that TV dinners cost a dollar at that time. So with you doing away with that, and me not being able to get that 125 refund back, that took 116 dinners away from me because that's what I would, you know, I bought those in order to, to for a meal, mm -hmm. and not 125 because I've got to subtract the sales tax, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, if it was, you know, if there was no sales tax on our food, I could have got 125 meals. But the way it was at the time, I could get 116. Mm -hmm. Of course, now the banquet dinners are $1.25. But why, why do you target those of us that turn on Social Security and take, take away that little dab of money when you guys take trips to, like, the world's a fun and us taxpayers pay for it, but yet you rob from us uh, senior citizens 
a few, you know, like I said, a hundred and uh, twenty-five dollars won't mean don't mean much to you guys, I don't think. But to us, like I said, it would have been a hundred and sixteen meals for me. And I, I, why can't you like, change it back to give us mm -hmm. the the refund back on the food sales tax? Mm -hmm. there, there has yes. been, uh, Carol. Thanks for your call. Mm -hmm. we, we, there's been attempts to do that. Uh, why it hasn't passed, I don't know. Uh, I, I think the way, probably the way it was structured. Um, is, is if I remember right of why it ran into a problem this last time, I don't think it was this year, it was last year, I think. We, in tax, I've been on tax for four years now. We've worked on this issue. One thing that many of us have worked on is to reduce the sales tax on food generally. Mm -hmm. And, but we get caught up in, like this year it would have been a political game to not really do a whole lot of good, but just say, hey, look, we reduce your sales tax on food. The governor, Governor Kelly brought this up her first year of to reinstate that mm -hmm. and uh, uh, but it, it got it got dissolved in politics mm -hmm. because it, it got added on to some other things that she didn't want and so it got pushed through well then it passed she vetoed it and then you know, th that's the politics of it like some of the things we voted on you may not like everything we voted on mm -hmm. in the last 24 hours but in order to get some of the good things you sometimes have to do that and then if it's wrong you, you come but I, I think you know I, I'm sorry that uh, you know that was that was taken away I think I know before I got there probably before yeah, you and, got there and, um, and with a lot of taxes too or tax breaks too and the child care credit tax went away at that time too and that hurt a lot of working families and mm -hmm. that one I wanted to see come back donations was another one yeah too. I, I, I think and, I think mm -hmm. things like that and there have been a lot of work and there are a lot of good mm -hmm. folks that come to Topeka that mm -hmm. talk to us on, on behalf of seniors mm -hmm. and, and some of those things to take care of. Uh, our friends at ARP are there every week in their mm -hmm. red vest and, and talking mm -hmm. about issues important to seniors. So, so that, that issue will, get, will have to get resolved again you know, next, uh, well, next year. Can, and then we could, we could introduce a bill right. just that we can keep it going. We can sneak in one more caller here very quickly. We've got a caller from Elkhart, Kansas. Good evening, sir. What is your question? Uh, good evening. Can you hear me? Yep. I had a question on a uh, property tax. Mm -hmm. uh, property tax is 11.50 percent. What are you guys going to do to reduce property tax? Reductions in property tax, hard time to talk about with budget projections the way they are now, but what well, are your thoughts? Well, a lot of property tax comes to the county level. And so one of the things, you know, we've done is, is uh, try to bring some transparency and some relief. This, this trans Tax Transparency Act, it started in the Senate. Yes. And so you might know more about it uh, mm -hmm. uh, as far as we talk about that, which is a direct correlation to property tax. Yeah, so uh, removing the tax lid was the exchange for this. And... Uh, you would be able to see if your property taxes were raised, what the what the purpose was is what is what the idea of this bill. So transparency to you to see where your trans your taxpayers' dollars are going. So that was the basic idea, and removing the tax lid was the trade-off. Mm -hmm. Well, and I know he was asking, you know, what to do to, to lower it. Boy, you know, every county has issues with roads, and and those type of things go up. I, you know. Your county commissioners, you know, have to make good decisions, and and it kind of ebbs mm -hmm. and flows. And so, hopefully, before too long, if you have agricultural mm -hmm. land, we have, I think one more year, and then that, that goes back down a rolling mm -hmm. average. Yeah, so. we're we're on the downhill. Slope. We only have a couple of minutes left, but and I would love to spend more time talking about elections. Oh, elections, and, yes, and, yes. and uh, mm -hmm. you know the extent to which Kansans are going to be voting mm -hmm. at the polls so we, or or voting yes, by and, mail. Do you want to? And uh, we're hearing a lot mm -hmm. about voting nationally right now too, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Scott Schwab, who's our Secretary of State, just came out with a release that last week that he'd like to see us do advanced voting. Mm -hmm. So I took him up on that, went online, and ordered my ballot for the primary and the general. And it was very, very simple. Mm -hmm. So I, he was encouraging us to do this. Uh, July 28th is the last day that we can do this. So if people would like to go on to the Secretary of State's website. And he also told me that the state of Kansas is getting $4 million in CARES dollars coming in. So when we do go to our polls, if we vote in person, uh, you could expect to see hand sanitizer, masks, even stylus pins. So they're, they're spending their money to each county, 
And those are policy things that he's doing with, with the elections too. So advanced mm -hmm. ballot, and then also new poll workers. They can work as young as 16 now. Mm -hmm. So we're asking for more so, poll So we've workers. got some new options. We've got the yeah. option of advanced uh, mm -hmm. voting. You can still mm -hmm. vote at the polls traditionally. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and some, some counties and have advanced? actually received mm -hmm. in mail. I've received mm -hmm. an application mm -hmm. yeah. for both primary and, and general counties, election yes. in, in my county, mm -hmm. Ellis County. Um, so some new things happening mm -hmm. with the elections that uh, citizens should be aware of. Um, we have uh, reached our, our limit uh, for this evening. We had a good, uh, lively discussion about a wide ranging, mm -hmm. uh, although And we still had more to talk about. We, we had a ton more to talk <laughs> about, but of course we have to deal with the COVID-19 mm -hmm. outbreak. Uh, citizens mm -hmm. are concerned, they're worried economic effects, the health, public health effects. Mm -hmm. So um, a wide-ranging conversation. I appreciate you coming on. Representative Rogers, thank you mm -hmm. so much. And Senator Bowers, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Uh, um, again, th this is the Kansas Legislature. I'm Jay Steinmetz. Thank you for uh, being a part of the show tonight, and uh, we'll catch you next time.